In this video we'll be looking at how to change the output of your project for presentation. We'll start by looking at code libraries. The code libraries which are available over here in the left hand side on the project view are a way of colour coding our activities so that it represents something to us. And We could colour code by build stage, design, discipline, floor level, whatever you choose. I'm going to use the Trades Contractor library here today. And if we open that folder, inside we find lots of fictional names of various contractors I might work with to build my project. Now these can be changed, you can add to these libraries, you can change the colours just by right clicking in the project view on the item and you can rename, set a new colour or even add to the list. If you were to right click on the top level folder, you could create a new code library entry and I might choose to put in here Acme Builders. I can set a sort order which will dictate where in this list it sits. So if I leave it at zero, I would expect it to sit at the top. If I numbered it, say number 18, it would sit at the bottom of the list down there. And there you go, Acme Builders has shown up in the list on the left hand side with the colour of yellow. But I'm going to use the Trades Contractors folders now just to allocate to my task so you can see how it works. So I've got some demolition tasks going here. I can allocate uh, the demo demolition contractor by left clicking, drag and drop onto the task on the bar chart and it's as simple as that to allocate a code and change the appearance of your task. Maybe I'll allocate some ground workers to my project here. Drag in and drop in as required onto my project. And if there was a couple of things that I needed the, the Acme Builders to do, I can multiple select various activities here and allocate that code to all of those tasks, saving a little bit of time there. Once we've allocated the codes to our project, it's very easy to use these codes to control the output. For example, I might want to produce a list of only those tasks that Acme Builders are doing for me now. And I can do that by right clicking on the name in the project view and open a code breakdown structure and that gives me a restricted view of only the tasks that hold that code. As I click on my other contractors the project changes to show me only those items. I can move back up to my program level to show the whole project program. The next thing we'll take a look at is the format tab. So if you click onto the format tab in your ribbon, there are a number of show hide buttons that can control how the Gantt chart, the bar chart looks. So starting at the left, I might choose to hide my float from the project and to hide the critical path. I could even hide the links. So create a very simplistic looking chart, just showing my activities and their durations and dates on there. I can put all of these back on at the click of a button so it's easy to remove them for a particular printout and add them back in when you want to see them. You might also wish to improve the presentation of your project by adding text annotations with notes or picture annotations to your project. To add a text annotation, you click the icon in the ribbon and you can come onto the bar chart and draw a box and type any notes that you want to include in your project here. So maybe there may be a client visit planned and uh, if I edit that text so that it's a little larger, I can come to the home tab, I can put that text in bold, I can edit the size of the text, even show it in a different colour if I choose. And I can pick that annotation up and put it wherever I need it. 
so I might have a client visit perhaps around these dates and choose to show that annotation at that position. I might also choose to use picture annotations to enhance the output. So picture annotations can be used for a variety of reasons. I might want to put a watermark into the back of the project or I might just want to show an icon next to a particular activity. Again, you can draw a box on the screen and then you browse and that's gone straight to the clip art file that is supplied with Power Project. And I might choose to put a, a watermark in here. Um, so I've got a watermark called preliminary. Uh, what I want to make sure is that there's no background or border around that annotation and that it sits right at the back of my plan. You see how that's going to sit behind my text, uh, behind my activities now. So if I just size that out so it covers the whole project and that can sit in the background there. When I'm ready to print, I can come up to the print icon on the quick access toolbar. And here I can choose to print um, to PDF or to paper, to clipboard if I want to paste it into a PowerPoint presentation, things like that. Come on to the details tab. And this is where I will select a border to print with my output. So the border I've got at the moment, if I click preview, is going to look like so. So any code libraries that have been used, they will show a, a legend there. Um, there's also a legend by default indicating what, what a milestone is, etc. And my border shows my main project information at the bottom of the page. But you can click to select whatever border you like and as you can see there's many borders supplied with Power Project. Now if I pick a plain border, this is a more simplistic border, shows my project name at the top and the other information that we entered in when we created the project, um, the client's name, who the project is for. Now what a lot of people like to do is to add their own company logo to the borders. So to do that, I can go back to my print settings and on the details tab, I will choose to edit this border. And that opens PowerDraw, which is a separate piece of software that's supplied with Power Project. It's a sister product. And this software is used specifically for creating the border files that get printed with Power Project. To add a logo to this, there's a logo icon, new picture. And I can give that a click. I can position it wherever I like around the border. And then if I click on file name, I can search my computer for the logo that I would like to add. So I've got a few different logos here. I'll choose the Alicosoft logo. And that's how it's going to look. I'll click OK. And it's going to show in the top right hand corner of my border file. I might choose to show that border instead of the who the project is by in text so I can get rid of that text annotation and instead put the border over here, perhaps make it a little bit bigger, etc. So when I'm happy with that file, save as and you can save your border with a new name. So I'll put in there new border. And moving back to Power Project, I can now browse to find that new border. And let's see how it's going to look. There we go. That's how that border is going to look with my own company logo added there. Finally, to edit the legends and things we see at the bottom here, back to our printer settings and we have the option to include legends in the appearance so I might choose not to include that milestone appearance legends. I can close that and it will disappear from the border and there are some further 
border areas that can be completed here with some comments who the project's drawn by etc and these can be edited by clicking on the output fields and you can put um, your name in here and any notes etc. So that those things will show at the bottom of the printouts.